while Trump is having a temper tantrum about the Supreme Court, his real fury has been reserved for former national security advisor and full-time got milk ad, John Bolton. Because as you've probably heard by now, Bolton is about to release a tell-all book, spilling all the tea from his time in the White House. And even though the book hasn't come out yet, it's already a riveting read. Bolton confirms President Trump explicitly linked military aid to Ukraine to investigations of former Vice President Joe Biden, the central claim that led to the president being impeached. Bolton alleges President Trump expressed a willingness to halt criminal investigations, to in effect give personal favors to dictators he liked, citing cases involving China and Turkey. At one point telling the Turkish president he would replace Southern District of New York prosecutors to make an investigation into a Turkish firm go away. Foremost on Trump's mind at all times was re-election. One example, says Bolton, the president asking China's President Xi to buy soybeans and wheat to help win the support of farmers, quote, pleading with Xi to ensure he'd win. Man, that is wild. According to Bolton, Trump's shady dealings with other countries went far beyond Ukraine. He was promising to personally kill any investigations into Turkish companies, and he was begging China to help him win re-election. And you know, that's not just corrupt, it's also really embarrassing. Because Bolton's book makes Trump sound less like a president and more like a crackhead who's out of cash. Come on, G, just help me get one more term. Just give me one more term and I'll suck. Your, did I tell you about my electoral college victory? So strong. Now remember, John Bolton is not some lefty hero of the resistance. No, he's a Republican through and through. He worked with George W. Bush and his father and Ronald Reagan. He also ran a major GOP super PAC and he was a paid commentator on Fox News. So he's as Republican as an assault rifle giving a lecture on trickle-down economics. So Bolton revealing these things about Trump should at least spark some concern because not only does he accuse Trump of abusing the presidency to keep himself in power, but it turns out Trump might be even more ignorant than we thought. Bolton paints a picture of a highly uninformed and impulsive president. In excerpts of his book, The Room Where It Happened, Bolton says President Trump did not know Britain was a nuclear power and asked if Finland was part of Russia. Sweet Lord. How do you become the president of the United States without knowing if Finland is its own country? I mean, I, I don't expect much from Trump, but if he doesn't even know about the white countries, then what chance does Papua New Guinea have? So, it's not a surprise that there's a lot of stuff that Trump doesn't know. But don't let that fool you into thinking that he doesn't know what he's doing. Because in the book, Bolton also reveals how one shocking moment from Trump's presidency was actually a carefully thought out plan. In November of 2018, Trump came under fire for writing an unfettered defense of the Saudi crown prince, littered with exclamation points over the killing of the post columnist Jamal Khashoggi. But according to Bolton's book, the main goal of the missive was to take away attention from a story about Ivanka Trump using her personal email for government business. And here's the quote. This will divert from Ivanka, Trump said, according to the book. If I read the statement in person, that will take over the Ivanka thing. That's right. Bolton says that Trump chose to personally defend Saudi Arabia's dictator over the murder of a journalist just to take attention away from Ivanka using a private email account for government business. And I'm sorry, but that's like lighting yourself on fire to distract from the fact that you farted. I mean, I get why Trump wanted to distract from Ivanka using a private email, AKA pulling a Hillary Clinton. But if you just want to distract the media, there are way less horrifying ways to do it. You know, like maybe, maybe streak across the White House lawn or eat a vegetable for the first time. Breaking news, the president has ingested a piece of broccoli. We'll bring you around the clock coverage as we wait to see how his body reacts. And I don't know about you, but I'll never be able to trust another Trump scandal again. Like, does he actually think Mexicans are rapists? Or was he just trying to distract from the mustard on his shirt? So I don't know. Selling out your credibility and abandoning America's ideals just to get your daughter out of a jam, that seems pretty awful to me. But on the other hand, 
I don't remember shit about Ivanka's email scandal. So, hey, I guess it worked. So, just from the excerpts that we've seen, John Bolton's book has painted Trump as corrupt, dumb, and amoral. But my favorite thing that has come out of this book so far also showed us that Trump is, like, really weird. As the Washington Post reported today, quote, in the months following the summit, Bolton described Trump's inordinate interest in Secretary of State Mike Pompeo delivering a Trump autographed copy of Elton John's Rocket Man on CD to Kim during Pompeo's follow-on visit to North Korea. Trump had used the term Little Rocket Man to criticize the North Korean leader, but subsequently tried to convince Kim that it was a term of affection. Getting this CD to Kim remained a high priority for several months. Yep, you heard that right. The president of the United States, obsessed with getting a CD to Kim Jong-un, like some teenager giving a mixtape to his crush. You gotta listen to track five. It reminds me of the time when you said you were gonna lose your nuclear weapons, but then you didn't. So tricky. You know, this might actually explain why nuclear negotiations between America and North Korea broke down. Because can you imagine being Kim Jong-un and then getting a signed CD from Elton John, but it's signed by Donald Trump? I mean, like, that's like getting an autographed Michael Jordan jersey, but it's signed by Donald Trump. There's no way to make it more of a joke. This is the joke. He's rude joke. It's also weird that Trump thinks Kim Jong-un listens to CDs. Dude, he's the president of North Korea. The man listens to cassettes. So these are just some of the crazy details that have come out of this book. And it turns out there are many other things as well, like Trump encouraging China to put their Muslim population in a detainment camp, or saying that journalists deserve to be executed, or even that invading Venezuela would be, quote, cool. Yeah, it doesn't end. Now, Trump's response to all of these revelations has been pretty predictable. He claims that Bolton is lying and that he's just a disgruntled, boring fool which is basically what he says about any former employees who criticized him. He's also suing Bolton to try and prevent the book from being released because clearly Trump is afraid that this book is going to tarnish his reputation. But Mr. President, don't worry about that at all because whatever is in this book, I promise you, will in no way change our opinion of you. Well, that's our show for tonight. But before we go, The Daily Show and Comedy Central have been donating to three groups who are fighting against police brutality and systemic racism. The NAACP Legal Defense Fund, the Equal Justice Initiative, and the Bail Project. Now, if you would like to help out and you have the means, then please go to the following link and donate whatever you can.